Give me a little thought this evening, and uh, uh, I'm going to share, share a few scriptures with you here. In verse in uh, Acts chapter 1, and when he had spoken, verse 9, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. This same Jesus, this same Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm glad that he hasn't changed, amen. It's still this same Jesus. Hallelujah. Which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Amen. I'm preparing myself tonight, and I hope you all are too. Amen. To see. Amen. Amen. His return. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The word of God tells us, amen, that the trumpet's going to sound. And the dead in Christ is going to rise. Then we which remain are going to be caught up. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be ready, don't you? Amen. Because I believe this same Jesus, the one that we're worshiping tonight, amen, and giving praise to is going to come back, amen, in like manner as he went up. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just give him some praise tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we love and appreciate you tonight. We're so thankful. We're so thankful, Lord, for your love. Amen. I'm thankful, Lord, that you're still the same. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm thankful. Amen. That we have, amen, something that is sure. Amen. It's sure. Amen. It's steadfast. It's unmovable. Amen. That we can, it's an anchor, amen, for our soul that we can latch on to. Hallelujah. That holds us and keeps us. Amen. In this, in this, amen, this world that we live in. Brother Seymour said this morning, amen, we're just pilgrims and strangers are passing through. Amen. This, this, and through this land. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to a better place. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Seymour, uh, Sister Felicia, you ready to sing? Come on. However, I know sometimes we start off with the course, and sometimes we start off with the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord tonight. There ain't no telling what God may do here tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I invite you tonight. Amen. That if you have a need, amen. And forget about the one that's beside of you, in front of you, behind you. Amen. And, and worry about the one, amen, hallelujah, that's up, up above us. Hallelujah. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. I'm here to tell you he's the healer of all manner of sickness and disease. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the savior of our soul. Amen. He's the keeper. Hallelujah. Amen. Of our very being. Amen. Come on, sisters, please. Let's worship the Lord tonight.
do that first first. It's time we squared our shoulders back. Yeah. I'll never forget when I was 10th grade, we were doing a homeschool graduation. We needed two people to be the flag bearers. My brother was one of them and I was one of them. And my daddy looked at me and he says, now see this, you gotta walk straight when you carry that flag. You gotta hold those shoulders back. And I'm thinking, oh my. He says, and you can't just, when you get up there, you gotta stand just as still as you can be. Get those feet firm down in that ground. Got me thinking today, I remember when he was, I was sitting there crocheting, I was thinking of that. I was thinking, you know, if we get our feet firm down, when that devil comes around, got our shoulders back, that devil comes around to knock us off our feet, he ain't going to. Because that day when I was in there doing their practice, and my sister kept doing this, trying to pop me back, and I wasn't budging. And I was thinking, you know, if we get that way, when the devil comes and does that to us, we ain't going to budge. We're going to be firm standing there, and we're going to have that sword in our hand. Well, when he's trying to do something to us, we can just use it, use the word, and we don't have to worry about him anymore. Because we are a soldier in God's army. Because I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. Yes, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord.
Hallelujah. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know. I don't know the rest of it, but those words just come to my mind. Amen. We're in a fight. Amen. We're 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 we're, uh, we're in a battle, and uh, we're going to either fight or we're going to lose. Hallelujah. And I don't want to lose. Hey, Brother Seymour. Amen. Hallelujah. But I, I want to stand up. Amen. And proclaim. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That God is, is righteousness. Amen. He is holy. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Appreciate the spirit that I feel here tonight. Amen. We're so thankful. I don't know if I twisted their arm hard enough this morning or not. Evident. Somebody shake their head no. So evidently I didn't twist it hard enough, did I? <laughs> How about it, Brother Don? Do you, you feel like singing, Brother? I don't know. If, if you don't, that's fine. We understand. Amen. But if you think you can, amen. We'd like we'd like for you to come and sing tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Mary Lou, stand up and say something for the Lord. Amen. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. Amen. Come on, brother. But I think of where I came from and my Jesus brought me out from a life of shame and sorrow lost in sin without a sound with all my heart to praise him for the love he gives to me when the precious hand of Jesus
Touch him now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In fact, business, I feel I feel him in our midst right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for your love, Lord. Your goodness, Lord.
for your healing power, Lord. I'm thankful for your healing power, Lord. I'm thankful, Lord, for the strength, Lord, that you're giving tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. To our, our hearts and our lives, our bodies, Lord, tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I appreciate you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I, uh, Sister Felicia was singing a while ago and making mention about whenever we get over there, the things that we're not going to, we're not going to have to worry about all these pains. There's going to be no more death, no more sickness. And, uh, everything be made new. I turned around to Brother Vic and I said, you'll have some brand new teeth, brother. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that. Yeah. Right. We're going to have new bodies. Amen. We're going to have new bodies. I believe, I believe it's going to be whole. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Stand up and testify, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you tonight. We praise you. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Andrew, he, he, is he out on us? He's out on us. All right. He, he's, he's played too hard today, I guess. Amen. How about it, uh, Sister Amanda, Sister Abby? How about coming to sing tonight? Hallelujah. I, I'll tell this since Brother Andrew, I, I don't I wouldn't do this to embarrass him. But uh, he got his feelings hurt this morning. He, he he didn't get invited up here to sing. And I told him, I said, I said, go on, Andrew, go up there and help him sing. And uh, I guess it kind of embarrassed him a little bit more or whatever, but anyway, <laughs> he, he he went and hid. And uh, but uh, you know what? I, I like it when when these children want to do something for the Lord. And, amen. When they feel like they're left out, and uh, uh, you know, it, it makes me feel good that they want they want to do something. Amen. Because I, uh, I, I I realize hey, I, I I've been there, and uh, I, I've been there to you know. And, uh, there was always those that could sing better. There's always those that could get up and speak better. There's always, and, and, and sometimes, I don't, you know, we, it was, who was it was talking about the, when we used to play softball? Brother, that, were you and Brother Seymour? We was always the last ones. <laughs> and I was always the last one to get picked, you know. Amen. So uh, I, know, I, know how, I know how that is. But anyway, we, we don't want to leave nobody out, amen, in, in worshiping the Lord and, and giving praise to God. Amen. Because you know what? Amen. We're all the same at his feet. Hallelujah. Amen. The ground is level. Amen. At the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, girls.
think of that song that the children sang, He's Still Working On Me. And uh, I'm glad that he still loves me enough that he still deals with my heart. Amen. My life. Amen. Things come along and, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that there, there's a standard that's raised up. And uh, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, sometimes it stops me in my tracks. He said, "No, you don't. You don't need to go that direction. That's not the right direction, Amen. You need to go. You need to go this way, Amen. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. Hallelujah. That he still, he still loves me enough. He still that he still works on me, brother Don. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Nancy, Amen. Come and say something for the Lord tonight. Sing." tonight, his blessings. I want to, first of all, qualify what I testified on last week. Uh, was at the time whenever that uh, Liz had the fall. Uh, and as I was, you know, told it to begin with, I said, you know, I had, someone had questioned me, what would you do if one of your kids was laying there that you didn't know if it's going to live or not? And I said, well, I think I would, but, you know, I don't know. And so, I said, well, God has got to know what we, what we know, what we, what we uh, believe, what we will do. And um, the re what I want to say about it is that um, someone said, well, where was Brother Bobby? You know, what are you doing doing it on your own, you know? Well, we, it was school time, and it was just, just before 7 whenever we were leaving. And uh, uh, he, had, he had been gone about 10 minutes, and he was working in Humboldt. And that was before we had cell phones. <laughs> So I couldn't call him until he got to work an hour down the road, and then he had to turn around and come an hour back. But in those two hours, the men from the from the church had gotten there before that he had. The Bible got there, but it it was about two hours after the thing had happened. But you know, God is so good to us, and and but one thing I wanted to say about it, it wasn't Bob that it said, I don't know. It wasn't Bob that said, I don't know. So God fixed it so that. He knew what I would thought and what I would do. So you know, you know, it wasn't if he had been there. You know, we knew that it wouldn't have been any qualifications of anything or any doubt. And um, there, the scripture in Proverbs uh, eighteen and ten said that there's a there's a strong provision, and that the righteous run into it and are safe. If we will remember that whenever all the sicknesses and the diseases go around, if we run into the top, into the God's pavilion, we've, we've got safety there. We say, well, well why do you, you know, the pavilion of God, he's not going to let anything happen to us if we will just keep our minds and our hearts knowing that we've got that pavilion that we can run into when we're safe. So I'm, I'm thankful for that pavilion that God has provided for us, that we can go to him in our safety, in our sicknesses, in everything that we have, God's got the provision there for us if, 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 if we run into it. You know, there's qualifications there. He said, come. If we come, he's going he's to supply our needs. If we, if we will believe, whenever the Jesus was asking the different ones, you know, whenever the, uh, he prayed for them, and he would tell them, uh, according to your faith, let it be so. So if we believe, if we if we can just reach out and just believe that God's going to do it, I was reading this afternoon, and um, uh, uh, I'm not going to do all of it, but I wanted whenever Matthew 16 and all that it said, uh, beware. Whenever that um, uh, 16 and 12, beware, and that beware means to hold to oneself. I didn't realize it just. Mean it, meant it like that. Hold it one step. Hold on, hold on. And um, then when it made me think of Revelation 3 and 11, where the, he said, Behold, I come quickly, hold fast that which thou hast, that uh, no, no man take thy crown. So we've got to hold fast what God has given us. The Word, 
fight that fight. We got that sword. Get that sword up there where that we can fight. But beware means to hold toward oneself. Hold on to it. And Revelation 3.11 said, um, uh, Behold, which means to see, to look, and take notice. So God is good. Yeah. He is so good. And I give him thanks and I give him praise for everything. I, I can't remember seeing anything that this quoted, you know, so I wrote my paper with me. <laughs> but I love God tonight. And I, I'm thankful for what we feel. Can we think back of maybe the souls that are not saved because that we didn't put forth an effort to do things? Can we think, you know, whenever the, it, whenever the Lord sent the disciples out, they were to go out and they were, you know, house to house, they were different. Because he said, you go to that house and, and they don't accept you, you don't shake the dust off and go on. But God has given us the opportunity. He filled us with the Holy Ghost. He gave it to us. He gave us the power to deliver unto what's needed to some soul that's there. But we have got to do it. We've got to step forth into that water. And step forth into God's promises and do what he wants us to do. Don't feel bad, Sister Nancy. I, uh, oh, uh, I've never been one. I can read something and, and five minutes later, I, I mean, I've been that way all my life. And, and it aggravates me. Mm -hmm. you know, because I, I, I like to be up here and, and be able to quote scripture word 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 for word I, I thank you brother Kevin and, and I, I think brother you're blessed you're blessed that you're, you're able you're able to do that and, and um, uh, you, you know but God has created each one of us as individuals and we got to do what we can do and, and I don't want to be wrong. That's the reason why I brought the Bible up here and read those scriptures to you because you get it right, you know. And, and, uh, and I know God God understands. He understands that. And uh, they used to laugh at me when in youth uh, in youth service because the only the only scripture that I can remember was Jesus wept, and that's what I quoted every Wednesday night. I get up, Jesus wept. <laughs> well, I'm glad he did. You know, Amen. But uh, it's kind of humorous. You look back on things, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I've learned to laugh with it, Brother Seymour. Yeah. Laugh and, and, and just go on. It, it, you know, it is what it is. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Brother Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You got a song, a testimony, or something? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's worship Brother Jeremy tonight. Mm -hmm. Who am I? Who am I? King of Oh, yeah. I'm thankful for all his many blessings. I'm thankful for another opportunity to get back into his house this evening. I love God. And I want to do more to please him. I don't do enough. I could spend all day, every day, and it still wouldn't be enough. But I'm thankful for his mercy that he showed. That's right. And he would come. But like the words of this song say, who am I that he would bleed and die for? When I think of how he came so far from
this may be a little humorous, but uh, I preached a, a message. Uh, it's been a few years back about special edition. You know, there's there's companies that puts things out. It's a special, you know, edition. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, of course, back when I started school, they didn't have kindergarten. You just, you start first grade and that was it. Well, I, I flunked first grade. I failed first grade. <laughs> and they put me in, in special ed. Sister Christina, I, I know you probably work with children being a teacher. You you probably seen those, it's, you know. And uh, I, I just I, I just couldn't comprehend. I, I just, I couldn't get it. And uh, so they put me in special ed, and uh, I, I was uh, in there, and we we moved from Negroville over to Naylor, which is I don't know somewhere around about ten miles or something like that, another little town. And, and uh, they they put me in special ed, and, and uh, I went through second grade and third grade, and uh, uh, had a real good. He was a real good. He's a crippled man, but he was a real good teacher. He just had a heart for kids, you know. And he, he took his he took his time and he began to work with me. And uh, and they had little programs, you know, to kind of help. And, and uh, it comes to a place, uh, a time that he uh, he they got together and, and they said uh, we don't think Johnny needs to be in here anymore. And so they moved me out in the regular class. Well. Let me put it this way. I graduated. <laughs> I graduated, okay? But I, my mind went back. I was, I say this, and I said this kind of humorous, but uh, in sixth grade, and uh, in, in sixth grade, we had, a, uh, we just had one teacher. Classes wasn't split up like they are now. We just, we had one, we had seven subjects, and, and she taught all seven subjects. And uh, we had, we had spelling on Wednesday. You remember I told you a while ago that I, I couldn't I couldn't remember anything. Man, I'd study them words. I'd, I'd write them. I'd study them. Well, Wednesday rolled around. We'd take spelling tests. And uh, I might, out of, I think it's 15 words or 17 words, 18 words, somewhere on there. Uh, I, I might get, I might get maybe a half a dozen right. And I'd misspell the rest of them. Well, we got a chance to take them over on Friday to take the test over on Friday. And if we missed any on Friday, for every one that we missed, we got a lick. So I got a book every Friday where I wanted it or not. I got one. And, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. She taught me something. And, and you know, there's, there's no, no, I, I, I actually I didn't, uh, I, I didn't get to the place that I hated her, but oh, uh, she, she taught me something. I got me an old pair of blue jeans that was wore out, and I cut them off, and then, and then I padded the back pockets, and then I put them underneath my blue jeans. So see, I wasn't as dumb as they thought I was. <laughs> They, they didn't, them links didn't hurt near as bad after I learned what to do, Brother Don. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Special edition. Special edition. I was a special edition. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? There, there are some things. I, when it comes to books, I just I just didn't have it. But now when it comes to my hands, I, I, could, I could build. I could do mechanic work. I, I was, right. I was just that way. Right. That's right. And, and uh, I took building trades. I done, I done excellent. Uh, I mean, I, I made, I made A's in, in building trades and mechanics. I made A's in auto mechanics and shop and things like that. My hands on. I, I done good. But when it comes to books, I just, I just didn't have it. And I think one reason is I couldn't remember. And but anyway. Uh, you know, God's blessed me down through time. 
Amen. He's messed me down through time. He's allowed me to work, make a living. And uh, I, I just I just give him. So I'm a special addition. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be in God's house tonight? Amen. 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 Sister Christina, you and Sister Rose have a song, or do you have a song? It, it, however, whatever y'all feel tonight. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I was thinking about it. that would be illegal now, I'm trying to yeah. get a kid just because they couldn't remember. Yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah times have changed. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's the teacher, too, because I remember when Kavon was in second grade, his teacher was going to bail him, and she's like, he's not going to pass, he's not going to do good, he's, and I was like, no, I'll start helping him, so I started helping him, and he started making A's, and we passed him on in third grade, he's been making A's ever since, so I was like, oh, this is just the teacher, <laughs> but don't work with the yeah. students, and I was thinking about this year, too, I had a one little girl that was, um, she was really low in math, so she went to a remedial math class. And this is about in November for 45 minutes a day. And the, the teacher came to me one day, and she's like, it was her remedial teacher. She said, I don't think she's going to pass. She said, she's, she just doesn't know anything about math. And I just kind of looked at her. Well, she took the Ames Webb test. That's our benchmark test at the end of the year. And she was way above average. <laughs> Lowest grade was a 93. So like I got to say, this is the teacher. <laughs> you just have to work with them.
two or three real smart ones. It just seemed like, you know, they could distance you. And uh, he would, he'd go over, he might work an example on the board, and he'd, he'd give our assignment for work in class. And he had these, we had these two or three real smart people. And man, in just a few minutes, they'd have their work done. And then he wanted to play, uh, he wanted to play chess. And they they get together. They play chess. The rest of us we was on our own, you know. And uh, and I I, I flunked it because I just I, I couldn't, you know. Uh, he didn't want to really explain it to you. He explained it to you one time, and then if you ask again, it you know he would act like it made him mad, you know. So you know you naturally you just get worried, you know. You don't ask. You don't ask. That's right. And but then in twelfth grade I had to take it over again to be able to get my diploma and they had got a new a new math teacher in and uh, I, I passed it no problem because he'd take time and, and he'd, he'd work with you he'd, 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 he'd just come back to your desk and, and, and get down there with you and, and you know work with you and uh, you, you know that's the way that's the way we have to be about souls Amen. You know when when the, if new ones come in or whatever, uh, we have we have to work with them. We, we have to, we have to be gentle with them. They're they're babes, and, and you know uh, they don't know. You know, and, and you know, but when they they get filled with the Holy Ghost, they repent of their sins, and God does a work. Amen. In their hearts and lives, and begin to work with them. You know, they'll begin to observe, and they'll begin to look around, and they'll begin to see things. And then, then you can kind of begin to bring the word out. Amen. You know, you, you give them milk. Amen. At the beginning, because they're babes in Christ. But as they begin to grow, then you begin to give them meat. Amen. And they grow. And uh, uh, I, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I, I, I've been in I've been in church services and, and uh, I, I've and I, I'm not uh, I don't mean to be taking up so much time here tonight, but I, I've have seen uh, I've seen people uh, that uh, you know maybe it's their first time there and, and you know and, and the minister get up and and he take his text on the way they look. You know that's not that's not wisdom. That's not using wisdom. You know and and, uh, and even though they may have been doing. They're not. Maybe they wasn't doing right. Maybe they didn't look right. Amen. But let them feel. Let them feel the love of God. Amen. Let, let them feel that, that drawing power. Let, let them feel God's grace and His mercy. And, and, and let, let that let that spirit begin to pull them. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what they need. They're hungry. They're searching. Amen. You know. And if we heard, I, I worked with a man that went to a, a meeting and, and and that happened, and he said, "I'll never go back." He said, I'll never go back to a Pentecostal church. Well, you know what? Somebody's blood, if he ends up being lost, somebody's blood's going to be on somebody's hands. Huh? We have to be careful. Amen. I, I, believe, I believe in preaching the word. I believe in preaching the truth. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something. Amen. I believe God gives us wisdom. Amen. To, to help, the, help these souls. Amen. That God, he, he brings into the fold. Hallelujah. Come on, Brother Kevin. I've said enough here tonight. Amen. Come on. Share with us what the Lord has Amen. placed on your heart tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right this morning, this evening, right before church, I was reading that message that you had read? Yes. That right before you, you got up, I was reading that in my Bible back there. But that's not what I wanted to talk, talk about. I've had this on my heart for about a couple of days, and I really felt to share it tonight. And uh, remember in the Old Testament, there was a incident that happened whenever Jacob was running away from Esau, and he fell asleep in the in the place where God was and he didn't know it and he had a vision in the, in the night and there was a 
ladder going up to heaven with angels coming up and down on it. And I had this in, in the New Testament when Jesus was talking to Nathaniel. And it says, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. And Nathaniel said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. And Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And I've read that scripture a bunch of times, and there's a lot of different messages that have been preached about that passage of scripture. And there's even been a lot of messages preached about in the Old Testament whenever Jacob was... It's called Jacob's Ladder. I mean, yeah. it's such a popular story. But they don't have a clue what that's really talking about. Whenever you're in the place where God dwells and you don't realize it, what God's really wanting from us is for us to, to recognize that as an altar of his, as a place of his dwelling. But what Jesus was saying here to Nathaniel was a lot more than just talking about himself. Because if you'll notice the wording here, he said, God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. He is the first Son of God that was called Son of Man. But because of him, we're joint heirs with him, and we also become sons of God, but we are sons of Him. So when he said to Nathaniel, you're going to see the heavens open and the angels of God descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. He wasn't just talking about himself. Because you won't find a recorded story of the time that Nathaniel seen that vision occur with Jesus. He was talking about in that upper room experience whenever they received from heaven the gifts from God. And that was when the angels were going to ascend and descend upon the Son of Man. And he, when he realizes that, when we realize, when we really understand that we are in the place where God dwells, when we understand that he ascends and descends upon our lives and he cares about us, the angels that are going up are carrying our prayers and our needs to God. The angels that are coming down are bringing the gifts from God and the things from God that we need. And if we would really look, look up, our redemption draws now. Because our redemption is an everlasting redemption. It is from now until the end of time. Jesus said to his disciples and everybody else that he was bringing eternal life. Eternal life is yours today. You're already in eternal life. Though this flesh may die, our life will not end because this flesh dies. Because we've been atoned for. Our life has already been atoned for. We're dwelling in the kingdom of God. And if we really understand that, whenever in Revelations, I, I was looking at that earlier today, whenever in Revelations, was it chapter 16, verse 11? Uh, yep, you flipped right to it. It's 11 and 16. I said it backwards. And 11 and verse 19. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquakes and great hail. But in the temple of God, like I was talking to Dad earlier just before church, the temple of God and the kingdom of God in the heavens reflects, the earth reflects, the kingdom of God on earth reflects what is going on in heaven. The ark of God is in the temple of God in heaven. But the ark of God dwells with man down here. 
the ark of God is dwelling in our hearts because that's where we we meet with God we meet with God in our from our heart he dwells with them of a pure heart I don't know if I'm getting any of this cross to anybody but I really feel this I want us to understand that, that we're special to God we're very special to God he cares for us I preached here a few weeks ago on he, he can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Yeah. He's a God that can be touched because he really cares how we feel. Yeah. He wants to help when we need help. And there are things that we, we go through, like Sister Nancy was talking about, that are for our better, our betterment. Yeah. Like Dan was preaching this morning about we, we glory in tribulation. And Paul said in another place, we, we glory in infirmities, in sicknesses that we're in, because God is helping us through these things. We don't need to blame God for every little thing that comes our way, because that's what the devil wants us to do. What we need to do is learn from it, and then we can receive hope and experience. And like Dad was preaching, you did such a good job this morning. I really enjoyed that message. But this is, this is the reason why right here because God's dwelling with us and if you really understand that whenever you pray the Lord's Prayer thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven that's what we're really saying I recognize that you're working right here in me what you want to accomplish here on earth and if I can do it, if I can just let my life shine the way God wants it to shine, if I can just, even when I fail, if I can understand that God cared so much about me that he already died and he already factored in those failures, that he's already shed his blood for those things. Yeah. Romans, what, where Dad was preaching from this morning in Romans, Romans was preached, it was a message that was sent to people that were already saved people that already had received the gift of the Holy Ghost and were already baptized. That's the reason why you can't take Romans. <laughs> you can't take Romans and preach the gospel because Romans was taught to people who were already saved. It was about how we can atone for the things that we do after we've already took care of all the things that we've done. But the temple of God dwells with man. He loves his people. For God so loved the world. Amen. Hallelujah. He robed himself in flesh, came and dwelt among mankind, but he also became that sacrificial lamb without spot or blemish shed his blood, amen, that we, we might be able to enter into his presence and be in his presence, Brother Kevin, amen, that was, that was good, hallelujah, amen, we're so thankful, amen, tonight, amen, God has been good, hallelujah, been a good spirit, amen, here tonight, we're just so thankful, we're going to get out of the way and let Brother Seymour come tonight, he may, he may sing, he may he may preach, he may run, he may shout. Amen. We don't know. We don't know. Hallelujah. Come on, Brother Seymour. Amen. Everybody say, Lord bless Brother Seymour. Lord bless
and I wasn't too good at any of it. And as a result of my inabilities, I just would put out. Yeah. I like you, Brother Guthrie. All right, I'll take Seymour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I learned something as time goes on. You know, if you'll not dwell on those things. That's right. You know, I've tried to tell my boys, you know, we play tennis and stuff like that. You know, I said, if you stand ready for that person serving, you, you, can, you can do a lot more than you can if you're just standing there trying to. God, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be ready. That's why we don't like his boys out doing them. <laughs> but I told Kevin when he was little one time, we were playing basketball, and he got upset because I wouldn't let him win. I said, all right, son, we played another game. And, I, and I, I let him win. I said, now do you feel better? He said, yep. I said, now you can go tell all your friends at school you beat your dad if you know I let you win. <laughs> what satisfaction is that? <laughs> the day is coming, son. Don't worry. You're going to be <laughs> And it did come. Yeah. We got to play tennis, you know. I could beat him some there, Brother Guthrie. And them, them. Of course, they're younger than I am. They got to where they could beat me. Uh -huh. so I went down to the tennis court one day, and a man was down there in the church agent. I don't think of his name, but. Gary. Gary. Gary McClain. Gary McClain, yeah, that's what it was. He's down there serving that ball, and he's making that big spin and hitting the ground one place and go the other direction. And, you know, he's hitting that ball and go across the net and it just hit and stop right where it was. I, I said, man, how are you doing that? But he got showing me how to put them spins on the ball. And I watched him play tennis, you know, and that ball comes in low and they'll hit that thing just as hard as they can. And when I tried that, it went over the fence and out into the park somewhere, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And I found out they were spinning that thing. And when they hit that ball with a swipe like that, that ball would curve over the net, hit the ground, come back down. So I got to put them spins on the ball, you know. Then I had my boys, I, I'd hit that ball, put a back spin on it. They'd be running back because I hit it hard. And they'd be, of course, it'd bounce straight up down the lane. What in the world? But you know what? Went long, they figured it out. Uh -huh. yeah. And I was back where I was, even harder for Florida to beat them. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, you know. You want to see your children improve. That's right. But you know, one thing I learned from about being picked last, and I finally learned to put some effort into some things. You gotta have tr trust in the ones that are that are teaching you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Sometimes God wants us to do things, and we're so caught up with our inabilities, and this isn't what I'm preaching on, but we're so caught up in our inabilities that we can't seem to do anything for God. Come on, brother. And the whole while, God's trying to tell us. You know, I got signed up for Little League one time, and, I, and it was a nightmare. Trying to judge that ball and hit it with a bat when it was coming at me. Pitch, slow was fine, but they're pitching fastballs at me. And I just couldn't get it. And the one get time we were, game we were playing, the last game of the season, we were playing the Red Sox. And, and they were like, there's no way we're going to beat them. Man. They, 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 they've just been too good, you know. And for some reason, when I got up to bat, I was actually hitting the ball. You know, and there's a couple people from the bleachers saying, Atta boy, Seymour, knock it out of the park, you know. <laughs> I kept telling them, God, hit that ball. And the last time I got up, the bases were loaded. <laughs> I pitched and pitched that ball, and I hit that thing, Brother Guthrie, just as hard as I could. It will sail all the way over everybody's heads, all the way back to the back of the fence. And I started running, you know, and everybody's coming in, you know. And I coached something, just keep coming, come on, man, keep going, keep going. And, and I got to looking around. Uh -huh. Afraid I might not make it to home base. Uh -huh. So I hesitated. Uh -huh. And then I got trapped between the catcher and the third baseman. And got tagged out. If I had just listened to my coach. Yeah. That has been a home run of the season. Won the game. We still won the game with three runs that came in, but I missed my opportunity for a home run. Come on. You know? Come on. Some of us, I think God's saying, come on, keep going, keep going. Yeah. And we started looking around like Peter did and seeing the waves all boisterous and roaring and wind and all this. And, 
And he started looking around. He started thinking, we need to learn to just trust in God. Yes, sir. God is telling you, I don't know what you're going through, but God is telling you, come on, keep going, yeah. keep going. I should not have even looked. I should have just kept running as hard as I could. Hallelujah. And sometimes that's what we need to do when we're living for God. Just keep running as hard as we can. Praise God. I might have sing that little song. Well, I've been running for Jesus a long, long time, but I'm not tired yet. I'm not tired yet. I'm not tired yet. I've been running for Jesus a long, long time.
Stan was one, you know, I always, always liked being around, you know, just, he's just always positive, always encouraging, you know, and that's the way I want to be, I want to be someone that's dragging people down, we need to be aware sometimes of our attitudes, you know, I, I taught a Sunday school lesson downstairs one time about attitudes, I told Brother Henson before I went downstairs, one Brother Rose uh, had just left and we were, uh, Brother Henson had took over the church and I was teaching Sunday school class down there and I walked downstairs, I told Brother Henson, I said, now, nah, you're going to hear the commotion down there. I said, just don't pay no attention to it, it's part of a Sunday school class. He said, okay. So I went downstairs and as we went downstairs, I just threw the money, my offering money down there in front of Sarah Pazuti and said, here, take this money, let's get this over with. You know, they're looking at me kind of funny. I said, man, I'm just trying to bring it and kick this whole And the chair had already picked out. It was already messed up. Someone had set up and folded it the wrong way. And I straightened it out. They're all just... The chair went across the room. And Brother Hens said, Brother Say, Ray said, don't worry about it. It's part of the Sunday school class. <laughs> <laughs> they clanging around down there. I kicked it across the room with a pile of other chairs. Yeah. They're all looking at me. I said, now, how did that just make you feel? And they're like, huh? Uh -huh. I said the subject this morning is attitudes. And your attitude affects everybody else around you. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not talking about all attitudes. I'm talking about grumbling this morning. Hallelujah. I don't want to get that grumbling spirit. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5 and 18. In everything, everything, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And you can be seen. God wants us to be thankful. Count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. Count it all joy. It's not saying you have to be happy because bad things are happening. But we can have joy in knowing that he's in control. We can have joy in knowing that no matter what's going on down here, one of these days, if we hold on faithfully, if we keep running, we're going to make it. Hallelujah. And we're not going to have to deal with this old valley of the shadow of death anymore. That's right. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 100 verse 4 tells us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Do we do that? We used to have that sign up there at the back. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And we start out our prayers. Lord, you know what's been going on. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't know what. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Uh huh. Some of the bus drivers used to come in, you know. They'd make them mad because they come in and start in on Tony, you know. We need to do something about this situation. I say, good morning, Tony. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. How about yourself? You know what we need? There's a right way and a wrong way to start things off. Hallelujah. Your attitude will change the attitude of the person you're talking to. Hallelujah. Man, it's important when we come to God. Thank you, Lord, for the things you give. Brother God's what he's talking about, man. I just, I just think about things this time. I think of all the little, just little, even knickknacks and things. I get looking through drawers sometimes, Brother Guthrie. I thought I had to have some of these things, you know. Show my grandkids some of these things. I, you know, I got a marine sextant. You know, I actually taught a message on the feelers of the sea. But, uh, you know, they use a marine sextant. Out in the middle of the ocean, how do you know where you're at? They had this marine sextant. And they could use certain stars and line it up with the sun on the coastline as it's going down and, and all kind of different things. But the, and they could take these things and tell exactly where they were in the ocean. There were some sailors that were so, had been in sea so much that they could actually just feel the water and tell what sea they're in. They've been blown off course, got no idea where they're at. Some of the Roman sailors could tell when they let down their, their anchor rope and pull it back up. In certain areas of the sea, a, a slime would build up on the, on the rope and they could tell where they were at. That's not my message. I don't need to get into all that. 
But uh, God wants us to be able to know where we are, what's going on. God wants us to be thankful. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I've sold them different stuff, you know, per telescopes and just maps and a little, uh, what do you call it, a little sundial compass and things like that. You know, just really, what, what's that mine to? But thank you, Lord, for the things you've given me. Just all kind of little things. Hallelujah. Some things I consider big things. I thank them for my home and my transportation and my wife and my children and grandchildren. Hallelujah. My children-in-laws. Lord, just bless them. But we start out thanking God. Hallelujah. That's what he desires. And then when we praise him. You know, one brother said, everybody praise the Lord. And everybody said, praise the Lord. I didn't say, say praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you praise the Lord for his excellent greatness. Yeah. You praise the Lord for his mighty acts. You praise him for his healing power. You praise him for the things he's done, not only in your life, the things you've seen him do, but you praise him. Hallelujah. That's part of prayer. Hallelujah. He wants us to be thankful. He don't want grumblers. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Bless his name. I wonder what people out in the world think about a Christian. All they do is grumble. Complaining about how things are going. Hallelujah. Just food for thought this evening. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Come on. Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength. And my shield, my heart trusteth in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. If you can't carry a tune in a bucket, it's beautiful to God yes. when we're using our voice to praise him. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We will not be grateful to God for all that we have until we first recognize that we're dependent on him. For all that we have. Until we realize he owns everything we have. If I've got finances, that's why, you know, it's hard sometimes for a new convert to realize God wants you to give. But Lord, I only have so much. You don't have nothing. All yeah. you have is what I give you. That's right. Hallelujah. I learned that when God dealt with me. Yeah. Last $300. Give that to a missionary. But but Lord, I'm going to need that $300 in just a couple days. And the Lord's like, I can take that $300. Give it to the mission. And I did. And you know what? He did take it. Yeah. And then he showed me that he's able to provide regardless. And I learned that day. Uh -huh. It's all his. Hallelujah. And when it comes to giving to him, hallelujah, don't hold back. That's right. Don't hold back. That's right, brother. we got to learn to put our trust in God. Hallelujah. It takes time. New converts, it's a lot harder. Praise God. Those of you that have been in church a while, and you've seen God move, you know, Brother Larry Black will be in his preaching course here a while back. You know, I, I told the story about paying tithes or buying groceries. That day my wife and I were trying to make a decision. I only had enough money to pay my tithes or get groceries. And I said, we're paying tithes. God said he'd provide, and we're going to pay our tithes, and Rose was in agreement with it. it we're going to pay our tithes first, and I didn't get a chance to pay my tithes yet, but I set it aside. We're not buying groceries with this money. And that evening, Brother Black will come driving up. He said, Brother, I don't know if you need this or not, but I just preached somewhere the other night. The Lord told me to take this money and buy you some groceries. So we bought you some groceries, and we stopped by the house and got some stuff out of the pantry and freezer, and here it is. And I told him the story. God knows. Yeah. And if we're willing to listen to him, he'll work with somebody else that's willing to listen to him and he'll make a way. Right. Hallelujah. Put our trust in God. Hallelujah. That song I mentioned this morning, Philippians 6 and 4, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Don't worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Hallelujah. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. That's how you do it. Not grumbling. Thanking God for what he's already done. And then asking God to help you with the situations you have at hand. The Israelites never did see him to get this. When 
I'll deal with them just a little bit this evening. But the Israelites just didn't seem to get it. Exodus 15, 22 through 27. Only three days after the Red Sea crossing, yeah. they grumbled about water. I told Moses, speak to the rock. And it brought forth water. And God gave a decree then after he brought forth that water. In three parts, he said, one, to listen to the voice of God. Two, do right in God's eyes. And three, pay attention to and keep his commandments and decrees. And if they obey me, he said, I will not bring on them any of the plagues of Egypt. Hallelujah. It was a promise. They just couldn't seem to get it because a month and a half later, in Exodus chapter 16, the whole tribe grumbled against Moses and Aaron because they were hungry. And what did God do? He brought man. Uh -huh. Got up in the morning and there was food. He gave qualifications or guidelines as to how much they were supposed to take on which day. And some of them tried to take more and the Bible says that it turned to worms and their jars that they kept it in. Hallelujah. The grumbling against Moses and Aaron, it was actually grumbling against God. Come on, brother. You know, some people, they have problems. I guess the preacher tries to do things. God tells you some things sometimes. Sometimes, you know, God speaks to me, and it's so clear I don't have a question as to whether it's God or not. And sometimes he says things to me, and I'm not sure, you know. And maybe Brother Jeremy won't mind me saying this, but if getting ready to go to church the other night and we run away. And Jeremy usually gets there faster. So I let Jeremy drive but when I thought that in my head, God said he's going to get a ticket. But I just passed it off. But you know what? I just got an election him. He got a ticket. And I told him, I said, look, son, I didn't tell him why I said this, but I felt guilty because I should have just went in and drove by late and he wouldn't have got a ticket. So I told him, I said, you just give your mom so much and she'll write a check to you for the rest of the day. <laughs> but sometimes God shows you some things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, help us. Hallelujah. Numbers 11 and 1. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. Yeah, How many times have I been guilty of complaining? Or just complaining in general, whether I'm praying or not praying, but just complaining about the way things are. Sometimes God will give you a little hint. I talked about complaining about some of my health situations. You know, hey, I'm, I'm 63. You know, and things just don't work all that well sometimes. And I find myself grumbling, Lord, I wish my knees would work better than they do. And I see this guy hobbling his door with one leg, he's crutches. And I thought, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't got it near as bad as I think I do, Lord. I thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, brother. But we don't want to complain to the Lord. It goes on and says, And the Lord heard it, this anger, this complaining. And his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them, this is the children of Israel, and consumed them, them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses. Look, you made this happen, but now they're going to cry to Moses and give him talk to God for them. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. You would think they would learn. Yes, no, sir. but they didn't. That's right. They turned right around and complained about the manna that God was giving to them. So he sent quail. And what happened? They ate their fill of quail and then made themselves sick. Hallelujah. It didn't work out quite like they wanted. Hallelujah. God, you know, perform some miracles there. Where did manna come from? How did it come? They had no idea. And then all of a sudden, these quail come flying in from the sea. It's all over the place. All they have to do is pick them up. Clean them and eat them. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 12. Next to Aaron, Mary, Aaron began to talk against Moses. We're prophets too. Hey, you got to worry be careful with some of them. I've seen some of these preachers, you know, that say, I'm a preacher too. 
They're worried about some of them preacher dudes. They're worried more about being acknowledged than they are really obeying God. Hallelujah. But they got to complaining and God spoke to them. He said, look, Moses is my friend. I talked to him face to face. Just like you would talk to each other. But you, you may be prophets also, but I talk to you in dark sayings. God talked to a plain man. They didn't like what happened when Mary pulled her hand out. It was leprosy. They had Moses pray for him, and the leprosy went away. The 12 spies. One of the greatest insults you can give God is not to trust in what he says, not to have faith. If God says, I'm going to give the land into your hands, and Caleb and Joshua went with the right attitude. You know, they came back. We are well able to take the land because they were trusting in God, not themselves. Let us go and take it at once. And the others are like, we are not able. I mean, we're like grasshoppers, grasshoppers before the Anakin. And they were. Did some gold this before, but I did some research into that. While they were making highways through Turkey, which is actually was the land of the Anakin, they dug up several graves of giants. Smithsonian Institute came in there. And why they do this, I don't know, but every time there's been a skeletal remains of a giant found, the Smithsonian Institute comes and gets them, and they stick them down in the basement under the Smithsonian Institute, and won't let nobody see it. But the Creationist Museum in Texas managed to get there in time to get one femur, the bone from the hip down to the knee. And uh, they had a scale made. They've got it in that museum there in Texas. You can go see it, but they made a scale of how big the human would be. They had someone that was in, you know, anatomy, like an anatomically correct scale, using that femur. And the man would have been somewhere between 14 and 16 foot tall. The average Jew being about five foot tall, you can imagine they did feel like grasshoppers. A six foot man came up to here on, you know, standing by that picture. You can imagine someone a foot shorter than you. He could just drop kick you off the field. But Caleb went, and they took the land. It doesn't matter how big they are. The old adage, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. They just found better ways to take them down. Come on. Hallelujah. But God, God is always there. Hallelujah. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Brother Price preached a message one time, sympathizers of Korah. They got upset with the man of God. Moses, you take too much on you. They thought he was doing all this, you know. He's making all these rules and regulations. Man of God, you take too much on you. You know, you're, you're just going a little bit too far. And they were going to rise up against him. And Moses went and prayed for him. God says, no, if they die a natural death, you'll know that I'm not even God. But if they die by some new thing, you'll know that I'm in this. Uh -huh. And Moses went out there and warned the people. Is everyone that's on God's side, you over here, anyone who's with the court up? Yeah. You over there. And the ground opened up and swallowed and then closed back up on them. And you think they'd get the head then, but no. The very next day they're saying, you did this, Moses. You killed all those people. Boy, you better watch it. Yeah. Come fire me, sir. Look. God, God appoints a man of God over, over a group of people. And it doesn't matter his ability. But yes, he was talking about, you know, not being able to remember stuff. That doesn't matter to God. Come on. You know? Come on. God doesn't need our abilities. He needs our availability. Yeah. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. But people get so upset about things. I know I've done stupid things before. Family members here that know I've done dumb stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want to please God. I want to be available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 17. They grumbled about Aaron being the favorite priest. God is the one that said to put Aaron 
over the priesthood, and his descendants, the Levites, were going to be the priesthood that took care of all these things. And they grumbled about it. You know, I will say, I said one time, he who grumbles is rarely blessed, but he who is thankful receives the best. And God's that way. I, I explained it to Kevin one time when he was a little kid. I said, you know, I said, if, if someone comes by, if you have two packs of cookies, and you go give one pack to one friend, and he just really thanks you and says, man, this is great, man. These are my favorite cookies, you know. And everybody comes by and says, man, you know what Kevin did? He gave me this pack of cookies here. Here, try some, you know. And then he gave a pack to somebody else, another friend. He said, yeah, I know, I right, know. I said, the next time you have a pack of cookies, only one pack to give away, who are you going to give it to? Yeah. That's the way God is. When God does something for you, you better be thankful. Testify about it. Tell of the goodness of Jesus. Oh, yeah, but it was just something so small. It's nothing is small in God's eyes. Hallelujah. Nothing is too great in God's eyes. Hallelujah. Give him thanks when he does these things for you. Hallelujah. Grumbling is addictive. And once started, it's hard to overcome. Hallelujah. It becomes a habit. You know, it's like gossip. Hallelujah. A lot of people start gossiping simply because they're in the presence of somebody else and they don't know what to say. And this comes to mind and they tell what's about something on somebody else. And it'll become a habit if you're not careful. You know, Jonah refused to obey God. Hallelujah. What was the results? He was swallowed by a fish for three days. Had to walk on foot instead of using the camel train. All the way to Nineveh. Hallelujah. I never have really figured out whether they're talking about the city with three days journey across or it took them three days to go through Nineveh or what. But you can imagine what you smelled like and what you felt like after you spit out of the fish's mouth. I often thought, would I have nerve enough to get back in the water and wash off? <laughs> would that whale come back? You know, <laughs> I'll wind up walking there smelling this. Fish is sticky and nasty. And, hallelujah. Out in the hot sun. Surprised they even let him in the city. But Philippians 2 and 14. Do all things without murmuring and disputings. It just brings everybody else down. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, one of the ten lepers seen he was healed and came back to thank God. And the Bible says he was made whole. He was made whole. That's right. You know, lepers will often time when you see them, their nose is missing, missing part of their mouth might be gone. Eye socket, eyeball might be rotted out, ear missing. Uh, fingers gone. You know. And if they went and presented themselves before the priest, even in that condition, if the leprosy was gone from the skin, they went through the purification process. Every hair had to be shaved off their body. They had to wash off in running water. And then they were kept outside of the camp for seven days and then re-inspected after that seven days. And if they were considered clean, they were allowed back in the congregation, even still with fingers missing. But this one guy, he was running along to go show himself to the priest right? He was a Samaritan. Uh, and uh, he noticed the leprosy was gone. He probably still had missing fingers. But the whiteness and all the redness and all the things that went along with leprosy was gone. And he turned and he came back and thanked God for healing him. That's right. And Jesus said, were there not ten of you? Where are the other nine? And he told them to go your way and made him whole. His eye was back, his lips were back, his nose was back, his fingers were back. He was made whole. Yeah. Hallelujah. It lets us know that God wants us to be thankful. The story of Naaman. Leprous, they sent him to the prophet. And he thought, 
Surely this man's going to come out and he's going to say some fancy words over me and wave his magic wand and the leprosy's going to be gone. And he didn't even come out and talk to him. He sent his servant out and tell him, just go dip in the Jordan seven times and you'll be made whole. And he got mad. Yeah, he did. Do you know who I am? You don't even show respect for what I, I mean, I brought garments, I brought gold, I brought silver, I brought all these things to give to the man of God. To heal me and he don't want none of it. Just go dip seven times Jordan. Is not the far part of the river in my own country cleaner than the Jordan? And he got mad and started leaving. And his, his servant told him, Master, if he had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? All he's asked you to do is dip seven times in the Jordan. Why not try it? I'm putting it in my own words. Uh -huh. Why not try it? And he went and he did. One time, two times, nothing changed. Three times, four times, nothing changed. Five times, six times. I still lepers. What if he gave up then? Seven times. Then he came up with skin like a baby. Hallelujah. Just obey. Yes. Yeah. Don't grumble. He was about to grumble himself out of a blessing. Look at Job. <clears throat> he got to grumble and he got that spirit. He started out, though the Lord slay me, yet will I trust him. But this went on, it went on, and he started grumbling and saying, God, you're not being fair to me, and all kinds of different things, and God straightened him out. But God poured his blessings out on him. Hallelujah. David. Being chased by Saul in the wilderness. You read some of the songs he wrote about how he felt while Saul was seeking his life. His own son turned against him. All kinds of situations happened to David. Hallelujah. Not terrible. Not terrible. Hallelujah. But when we turn on praise, that's why when we talk about you can praise your way out of your situation. Just stop jumping up and down and dancing and shouting and saying hallelujah. Just praising God. Uh -huh. Thanking him for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. You never let me down, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll close on this. You know, have you ever been given a gift of appreciation? Someone just really appreciated you and they gave you a gift and just I want you to know I'm thinking of you. I want you to know I love you. I care about you. Every time you see that thing, what runs through your mind? That situation. Hallelujah. Give to God, God, the gift of ourselves. Just be humble. Be thankful. Be obedient. Hallelujah. And God's blessings will be poured out on you like you've never been able to realize. Hallelujah. Just trust in Him. Stand with me. Hallelujah. It's not a long message, but maybe it's something to think about through the week. Hallelujah. Lord, help us. I don't want to be a grump. I want to be thankful. Praise God. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Let's keep remembering those that we've been praying for. Sister Sarah texts this poor church, and she asks that we go ahead and keep her in our prayers. She's been praying for her. Just got back from another treatment or something. She said she's eating a bunch of fruit. I don't know if it's supposed to be good for her. Lord, keep his hands about her. Yes. Hope we get a good night's sleep. Yes. Remember Sister Vasquez. Hallelujah. God removed that pneumonia from her system and healed her. Indeed. And allowed her to get up and come back to the house of God. You know what the pastor needs his wife. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many others, Brother Guthrie. Was it the brother-in-law? Here's here's the here's the deal, uh, Richard. Uh, he, he got in trouble, and he got twenty years.